The sad reality for NVIDIA's 20 and 30 series users is that frame generation is grayed out in games because DLSS 3 frame generation is only supported by NVIDIA on their 40 series GPUs. In this video, we're gonna look at how to mod FSR 3 frame generation into your game so that you can actually use not only uh, frame generation, but still use DLSS upscaling. And that is really cool. Uh, because normally with FSR 3 in the, well, it's only in four games so far, but FSR 3 frame generation just went open source and modders have of course already been playing around with that. FSR 3 frame generation can run on basically any modern GPU, doesn't need to be 40 series, doesn't need to be AMD GPU. Use. But in the four games it's been officially implemented into, uh, you have to use the AMD's FSR pipeline, meaning you can't turn on DLSS upscaling and then FSR 3 frame generation. This mod actually has the advantage of uh, allowing us to do frame generation using the DLSS pipeline. Uh, also has the disadvantage of this is only going to work for NVIDIA GPUs because uh, I believe the mod is based on uh, getting into NVIDIA's streamline pipeline, uh, which does check that you are on an RTX GPU. So what are we doing? First of all, I'm gonna quit out of the game and I'm on two PCs right now, so that's confusing, but uh, we're just gonna Alt F4 out of that. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, how we are going to mod in frame generation. So uh, first of all, I'll have this link in this uh, video description. There's a number of mods claiming to do this right now. The one I have tried is free. Some of them have been paid. Uh, and this is from Anukum9 on, uh, on GitHub. And the uh, GitHub page, uh, the, the most recent update is build 0 0.5. So this is currently pretty new, uh, work in progress, all of that. And in general, when installing mods like this, I, I should say, do so at your own risk. Uh, but you will download the, uh, the latest release. You could try other releases if this one isn't working great for you. And you wanna go ahead and download the zip folder. Although if you use the DLSS tweaks mod, um, then I, I guess there's a separate version with support for that. I don't use DLSS tweaks, so I don't have any experience using that. I'll be using the normal version here. And maybe by the time you're watching this video, things have been updated. But the point is, uh, you will download that and you will open up uh, that file. Now, uh, what I've got open here is my downloads folder with the, the contents of that mod. And then you will need to navigate to the game you wanna add this into. Now, this particular mod says it's only been tested officially by the developer in Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3. Although if you look at comments on it, people are having mixed success making it work in other games with DLSS 3 frame generation. Theoretically, if it's getting into NVIDIA Streamline, uh, this might work in more games, uh, but again, as the mod is developed and you know, I I'm not testing out all of the possible games in this video or anything like, but um, anyway, just be aware of that. So what you need to do is, uh, if you're gonna do this in Cyberpunk, which is what I'll be showing in this video, is you need to navigate to your game's, uh, the, the correct folder in the game. And uh, basically what you're looking for here uh, is, uh, if you're installed on Steam, you'll probably have your, your Steam folders uh, installed somewhere. So, so for me, I, I go uh, Program Files x86, uh, and then we're gonna scroll down to Steam, and then I believe we go, uh, Steam apps uh, right here. Uh, then I go common. Under common, I have my games. I find Cyberpunk 2077. And then we're gonna open up the bin. So open up the bin and you wanna go to X64. Again, if you're installing Cyberpunk in a different way, different folder path, it's possible that you'll have some other way of getting here, but you're looking for opening up bin and then the X64 folder and there's a bunch of junk in here. Now, the good news is you don't really need to mess with taking any of that out. Uh, what we need to do is take a look at this. So uh, in this, uh, this is the, uh, you know, the folder we got off the GitHub page, uh, and we're gonna copy and paste some things, but first we actually need to disable NVIDIA signature checks. Now, when you open up the readme file for this, uh, 
its description of what to do seemed a bit different than, than what I actually do. It says right click on disable NVIDIA signature checks dot reg and select merge. Click yes when the dialog opens. However, I didn't see any, uh, I, I didn't see that when I, when I actually tried doing this myself. So uh, what I ended up doing is like, I right click it, I don't see merge, right? So um, I just double click it and it asks me if I want to run this or not. And I am just going to give it permission to do that. Now again, do so at your own risk. This is a registry edit, okay? <laughs> um, so again, you know, do so at your own risk. Now we are going to allow it to do this. We are gonna be sure we're gonna continue. If you don't do this, this mod will not work. I did try it without allowing the registry edit. And they do have a restore NVIDIA signature checks uh, right here, uh, which would be like how you would uninstall those registry edits. So if you were done with this mod, didn't wanna use it anymore, whatever, uh, restore NVIDIA signature checks should undo whatever this just did. But once again, registry edits, use at your own risk, all of that. Anyway, what we need to do now is take two of these files and copy them in uh, to the actual game, uh, the, the bin x64, the x64 folder. So we're gonna copy uh, DLSS to FSR3, um, <laughs> the file name here is actually hilarious, DLSSG to FSR3 AMD is better .dll. So um, anyway, AMD is better. We are going to copy and paste. So we can copy what you could do with uh, control C, or you can um, uh, try to just, uh, you know what, uh, I have two computers open right now, which is which is obnoxious, so that's kind of my problem. Is this paste? I always do this control C, control V, but my other keyboard's way over there. Anyway, and then we are going to copy in the NVNGX DLL. Uh, so we're gonna copy that as well. And again, we're gonna copy that into the same folder. Man, I never do this with a mouse. Okay, <laughs> then we're gonna go into here and we are going to paste. So we should have those two folders now and now we are going to click play on Cyberpunk. And if you do this correctly, you should get a pop-up screen uh, telling you that something has happened here, right here, this is it. So if you've installed this correctly, you get this DLSSG to FSR3 pop-up. No, it's telling you that this will make FSR3 frame generation replace DLSSG frame generation. And it says, please note this is experimental software. It is subject to bugs and or crashes. And this does not represent a native implementation of AMD's FSR3. So in other words, if an actual game developer implemented FSR3 properly, uh, they could probably do a better job that's more stable, might, uh, might look better, less artifacts, that kind of a thing. But, uh, you know, so just don't judge FSR3 based on what it's like when a modder implements it. It's basically what we're getting at here. Gives you a place you can report issues and it says warning do not use in multiplayer games. Uh, the main idea here is a lot of multiplayer games will check if you have modified any game files and can you get you banned on anti-cheat stuff. Uh, so that is a pretty important warning if you don't wanna get your account banned in multiplayer games. Anyway, go ahead and click okay. We'll get our game to fire up now and we should now have the access to the frame generation button in the game. Let's go ahead and get into the menu here. And we're gonna go to settings, video, and uh, sorry, graphics settings here. And notice that frame generation is now able to be turned on. Now, notice that it will still call it DLSS frame generation, but it's not. It's using FSR3's frame generation, but the cool thing is, it is using NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling at super resolution pipeline, which has better image quality than AMD's upscaler. So that's where in, in one way, this is actually better than a native FSR3 implementation, assuming the native FSR3 implementation is like the four that we've seen previously, which lock you out of the DLSS upscaler pipeline if you use the FSR3 frame generator. Now, I wanna actually try this out on screen for you guys, but I'm gonna pop out to actually film my screen directly because the thing is filming with a, a capture card uh, like I'm doing now here, that's not variable refresh rate. So it can get screen tearing and things like that introduced uh, that you wouldn't see on an actual variable refresh rate display. I also wanna verify that variable refresh rate is working correctly because that is one of the issues with some of the initial FSR3 implementations, but I believe the open source version of this mod should have solved that problem. So let's pop out for a second. 
All right, here I am on an RTX 3080 we've loaded into the game. We're currently at basically the ultra no ray tracing preset at 4K resolution and DLSS quality, currently frame generation off to get a baseline for performance. Uh, you can see my NVIDIA software overlay for performance numbers in the bottom left corner of the screen. Looks like we're about 52 frames per second. And if I bring up my TV's uh, software overlay, we can see that we are in G-Sync mode and we are matching the uh, refresh rate of the actual game. Uh, so everything seems to be working properly. And let's go ahead and double check that when we turn on frame generation in the game, that our frame rate goes up and uh, uh, variable refresh rate G-Sync stays on. Now when you kick that on, it'll go to auto super resolution. So I'm gonna set it back to quality so we have the same baseline. And uh, let's go ahead and pop out of the menu, give the frame rate counter a second to stabilize. And now it's reporting 88. So, um, yeah, it definitely did pop up. Let's make sure G-Sync still seems to be enabled and it does seem to be tracking with the game's uh, refresh rate properly. So that does seem to be enabled. Now, the other thing we need to check for is, is this mod just duplicating frames or is it actually generating frames? So uh, I'm gonna get an idea. Now this won't come across perfectly in a video because I'm in a variable refresh rate game and you are watching a fixed 60 FPS video, although I am filming it at 120 FPS to at least help with that. So I'm getting an idea of a camera pan. I chose these uh, difficult to look at um, uh, lights, vertical lights, because I think I'll, I'll see issues uh, if, if there are any. And actually I do think I see something. Let me go ahead and turn off frame generation. So frame generation back off, everything else is the same. I'm gonna do the same camera pan. Okay, interesting, yeah. So I can definitely tell that frames are actually being generated, not just duplicated. I don't know how much of this comes across in the YouTube video, but there are definite gaps between frames here on the normal camera pan side to side. In other words, I can kind of see things jump from one place to the next uh, as, as you know the, the, it, it refreshes. But uh, if I turn frame generation on, I can definitely tell uh, that there is more smoothness happening. Oh, wait a second. I can tell when I kicked on frame generation that the super resolution changed. Yep, I'm gonna go back to quality setting to make sure it's an apples to apples comparison. Otherwise, I think it goes to auto and at 4K that would go into performance mode upscaling, which we could certainly test, but okay. So here we're at apples to apples. Now, I don't know if this is gonna come through in the YouTube video. Uh, but I absolutely see a grainy version of this light uh, pop up in between frames. It, it's a little bit hard to describe, but it's almost like a fizzled together version of the lights, uh, one off and one on, uh, where it almost looks like a uh, uh, kind of some dots of the light and some dots of black, which is interesting. I intentionally chose this scene because it would be really hard for a frame generator. Uh, turning frame generation back off, and again, uh, larger gaps between frames, it feels much less smooth, and I don't get those, the, those garbled in-between images. Now, the garbled in-between images aren't necessarily a bad thing. That's showing, that's telling me that the frame generation is actually generating frames and not duplicating the frames. Uh, so in other words, this does actually seem to be working, and it's not a horrible artifact or anything like that. I was just intentionally choosing a situation where I knew we would get an artifact. Uh, that I could um, then verify, you know, the frames were actually being generated. I think in normal uh, motion, uh, this is actually feeling pretty good. Um, I kind of get the feeling the HUD element is refreshing at half refresh rate, um, like that 100 meter sign. And, and that's, pr that's what FSR 3 actually should be doing. Otherwise you would get, uh, you would get um, more egregious garbling on the, the generated, um, uh, on the generated UI elements. Um, yeah, so so when I turn frame generation off, the, the uh, 100 meter sign does seem to be more in line with everything else on the screen. Uh, whereas with frame generation enabled, and again, going back to the quality mode here, uh, it does seem like everything else on the screen is updating quicker than, than that sign. I, I don't think that's just in my head. It's not super distracting, but the point is it actually seems to be doing what FSR 3 should be doing. Uh, that is how it's supposed to handle, uh, well, one of the options for how it can handle UI elements. 
So yeah, I would say that this does actually seem to be working. From a responsiveness perspective, this feels absolutely fine for me. I don't know if the average PC latency correctly reports the generated frames. Um, now I have seen people talk about uh, adding in reflex support because uh, again, uh, this, this is grayed out as on, so it might actually be on. I've also seen people talk about adding in vSync support if you're going past your uh, native refresh rate through NVIDIA's control panel and forcing it on. So there's a lot of stuff you guys could play around with here. Uh, I'm curious if we could go into like RT Ultra mode uh, in performance mode upscaling where uh, with ray reconstruction on, let's turn off frame generation and see how we could do without frame generation. So again, this is... 4K output, uh, RT Ultra mode, and we're averaging about 45 frames per second here, uh, turning this way about 43. So we're kind of in the in the mid to low 40s, uh, kicking frame generation on again, making sure we're in performance mode upscaling. Um, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Looks like we are uh, up to kind of mid 60s. It does seem a lot smoother, although I feel like we've got motion blur kicked back on. I originally, yeah, I had originally turned off um, uh, motion blur and all of that on uh, when I was on my other settings, so we'll turn that back off. You might still want it on, depending on your personal preferences, but to, to examine the frames, I had those all turned off. Anyway, um, I think this is generating from too low of a base frame rate for my personal preferences. It actually still feels fairly responsive, but I don't know if it's uh, quite worth it. But the point is that it does seem to actually be working. And you can go ahead and join in on some of the comment pages and things like that about these technologies to sort out any issues. Again, I do see a bit of garbling between frames here. Do you guys see that? Do you see the kind of like spotty in-between image on those lights? Now, I'm curious if, if a... Uh, if a full implementation of this would work better, uh, and, if, and Cyberpunk is on the list of games to officially get uh, DLSS3 support, uh, sorry, sorry, FSR3 support. However, I'm curious, like I said, one of the big things is this mod allows it to be generated with uh, the upscaling, um, with the DLSS upscaling. I'm curious if the official implementation would lock you into FSR upscaling mode, which would be uh, kind of annoying. Like I said, I, we're definitely getting generated frames, but the quality of them coming from this low of a base frame rate, um, not looking uh, uh, amazing on that. But again, it's certain images probably come across worse than others. Let me know what you guys think trying it out in the comment section. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope all of you have an excellent day.